I mean, number one, do we believe Jordan Poole was trying to injure Ja? I don't think so. Jordan said as much after the game, look, I'm not trying to injure anybody. That's not my game. I'm not dirty. That's not who I am. You can look back and check it, and it's true. I mean, Jordan Poole has been an offensive spark plug for them and really developed into a really nice player, but not known for hard fouls, scrappy play, intense defense. You know, that's not really who Jordan Poole is. So I believe him there. I think it was instinctual. There's a ball. It's an intense game. Jaws trying to break free. You're kind of grabbing for it, happy to get his knee. And we're looking at super, super slow-mo and still shots. And so everything's going to look worse than it is. I do think, though, that the intensity of this series has been ratcheted up to where there's desperate moves, instinctual grabbing, pulling, yanking that's happening because of A, what's on the line, and B, the history now of this series. And when the Warriors, like Clay Thompson, say things like, we play the game the right way, And Steve Kerr kind of echoing that. We play the game the right way. They play dirty. We play clean. I have to roll my eyes. Because all of this starts with Draymond Green's foul in game one when he's ejected. Now, to be fair, I didn't think that was an offense so egregious that you had to throw him out of the game. But that does set the tone for this series because it is a dirty play. He's grabbing a guy's jersey as he's going up in the air and pulling him down to the ground. Can't do that. So it's either a flagrant one or a flagrant two. I would have said flagrant one. You don't throw him out of the game. But it sets the tone of, oh, okay, A, we're playing like this, and B, the refs are going to toss you if you play like that. So that starts the animosity. That starts the bad blood in terms of physicality and borderline fouls and ejections, et cetera. Dylan Brooks takes to the next level in game number two and from behind knocks Gary Payton in the head, the back of the neck. That causes him to take a spill, fractures his elbow. He's out for a month. That, of course, ratchets up the intensity. And then they're out there on the floor. They're scrapping for every possession, every ball that's loose, et cetera. And here comes Jordan Poole yanking on the knee of John Morant. And whether the injury happened to that play or not, The Grizzlies are going to use that as, see, look how dirty they are. Look how, look at how cheap that shot is. We lose our guy, and so it just keeps boiling and boiling and boiling. Now, this is why this series has become must-watch. But the Warriors can't, with a straight face, say, we play the right way and employ Draymond Green and defend him at every turn, which is what they all did, including Steve Kerr after the game one play. Can't do it. That's hypocritical. So the Warriors are hypocrites. Every time they keep Draymond Green on on the team, you can't argue when something bad happens against you. That's, That's what you've asked for. But number two, beyond that play, this is about whether the Grizzlies have the ability to keep rattling the Warriors into poor offensive nights. They've got to do it three more times, and I'm not sure you can do it because the Grizzlies just don't have the firepower. I mean, look at what they needed in game two. They needed Ja to go for 47 points. You can't expect that, and of course tonight he's unlikely to play. The Grizzlies have had to find some type of balance in playing tough, minded physical defense but not going overboard to where you get ejected from games and what ended up happening I thought in game number three was the Grizzlies hung around as long as they could but then the Warriors go on that run of the third quarter and then pull away in the fourth and by midway through the fourth it's a complete blowout and the Warriors are pouring it on I think the Grizzlies got exhausted in trying to play that defense. And then once they lost Ja, kind of emotionally lost their heartbeat and kind of knew they were going to lose anyway. 
If they don't have Ja tonight, it's going to take an entirely different set of focus. And maybe they're well-suited for this because they did it so well in the regular season. But they have to try to find a way on the road to bang and to bruise and to distract and force the Warriors into uncomfortable situations without a million fouls, flagrants, flagrant twos of getting ejected out of the game, having already seen the refs toss two guys from this series for exactly that. It's a tall task. And then you have to find the offense without Ja in there as well. But it starts with the defense of the Grizzlies. As high-flying and fantastic as Ja is, it starts with the defense for them. That's where their success begins.